Aloha and welcome to Knitted Paradise, where the needles are clicking and the yarn is squishy. My name is Lucia and you can find me online as Pearl of the Pacific. Today is Sunday, December 20th and this is episode 102. Welcome everybody. I hope you had a good week. I had a fantastic week because I was on vacation. So it went well. I uh, got a lot of stuff done, got a lot of knitting done. Um, it was good. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of ready to go back to work. I mean, I could, of course, use some more time at home to do things. But, you know, I'm ready to go back to work tomorrow. So that'll be kind of nice to see the guys again. So, yeah, it was a good week. So I'll tell you more about that a little later. I don't want to bore everyone in the, <laughs> the front of the episode. So let's get going with some announcements. Um, I am in the bird room again. She looks like she might fly again. <laughs> so you may hear her flying around, but I think it'll keep the squawking to the minimum, which is really the problem. All right. Blow the conch shell. I am going to the Knitting Pipeline retreat in February. So yay. I'm really excited about that. I have never been to a knitting retreat. Um, I keep meaning to go to the Knitting Pipeline one because it's in Washington, Illinois, which is fairly close to where I'm at. It's like a three-hour drive or something. So I just always miss the deadline. So thank you to the little friend. Or not little friend, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, thank you to the friend who reminded me that I need to register. So I did that. I'm in and I'm going. And... I hope to be teaching a little, or not really, I guess facilitating a little toe-up sock knitting workshop. So that will be, it's just, it's not a class um, per se that you sign up for. It'll just be like half an hour, 45 minutes, kind of like on the side during like general knitting time. I don't really know how retreats work. And I know they're all a little different, but Paula was saying that she would be open to having people do little kind of side workshops. So I said, hey, I could do one about toe-up socks. So I'm going to hopefully do that. And yeah, so just talk about what I know about toe-up socks. I mean, most of it I think you guys have probably heard on the podcast, but I just thought I'd share it and kind of bring my socks and things like that. So that's that. That's happening in February. I don't know if registration is still open. I think it's open until it's full. So go check out the Knitting Pipeline Retreat group. There's a Knitting Pipeline podcast group and a Knitting Pipeline Retreat group. So go check out the Retreat group and it'll have all the information if you're interested in going. So it'd be fun to see you there. Um, the other announcement is, or other question, is anyone else interested in doing a sock yarn swap? It doesn't have to be a holiday thing. It can be a holiday thing. It's up to you. Um, I've had... I'm swap, I've, I have a swap partner and two other people signed up so I um, introduced them to each other and they are swapping and so if anyone else is interested I can pair people up. It's, it's a really informal thing. I'm just pairing people up. You can talk about what you want to put in the, the box um, or the package rather. It doesn't have to be a box I guess. So that's that. Um, next, on the island, I have some awesome knitting to show you that I'm really excited about. So in the beginning of the week, I texted a picture, or I didn't text a picture, I took a picture and posted on Instagram of my piles of work in progress, works in progress. And it's huge, let me tell you. It's, it's very big, very large, or it was very large um, at the beginning of the week. And so during the week, I finished a couple things. I realized there were some projects in there with yarn in the bag that I hadn't even started the project yet. So I'm like, obviously this isn't going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> I haven't started it yet and it's been there for how long? So I put the yarn away, you know, cleaned out the project bag. Um, so that was kind of nice and cleared some stuff out. I've emptied all of those project bags and I still have to sort through the notions and random things that I had in each of them. So that will hopefully get done today and just kind of making sure that all of my project bags have, you know, like a pair of scissors, a darning, or yeah, a, a darning needle, a yarn needle, um, a yarn needle threader because it makes your life so much easier, um, and some stitch markers. Those are kind of the four things I tend to keep um, 
some locking stitch markers generally and then some um, just like ring stitch markers either with dangly things or not. So I'll talk about that another time like what I keep in my bags as I sort through them. So that being said I got some knitting done because I really wanted to get that pile down. It was just it was a little overwhelming. So I pulled out ooh, my head wig. I pulled out my secret garden shawl. Is she gonna land somewhere? There she goes. All right. I pulled out my secret garden shawl and didn't clean out this project bag because there's still a project in it. And got some work done on it. I actually finished the first fall or the first skein. This is kind of what's left. Okay. It's not enough to do a whole row, so I'll join in the new ball for the new row because <coughs> I'd rather join it on the edge, not the middle. So I put a progress keeper in here to show you how much I've done. I was so prepared. So this is where I was last time. Ah, so this tries to fall off my lap. And it is getting very large. So this is a whole skein of yarn. And this is knit out of Western Sky Knits um, in, the, in their Magnolia Sock Base in the Misselthwaite Manor colorway. And the pattern is by Alana Dacos. And I am loving it. I've almost got it memorized like the edging like the edging is pretty easy and then like where the increases happen on the side is different it's not like a standard you know increase every other row or whatever so those I have to pay attention to but once I get going I can pretty much figure out what's happening now which is kind of nice but I'm really excited about that that's going to be more of a long-term project I really want it done now but these rows are really long. They take forever. And because, you know, they've got cabling and increases and decreases of all sorts, they take a while. But I am loving that. And that is living in my, I got that as a little skein in the big wool kit. And so I keep it in the bag from little skein. Came with it, which I love. So that is knitting one. And that actually got, that's a lot of knitting, let me tell you. It may not look like a whole lot, but those rows are really long. The other thing that I'm really proud of that I did was I provisionally cast on the sleeves for my peaceful pullover. Yes, people, it is not hard. I just didn't do it <laughs> until this week. So I sat down with the YouTube video and I was like, I am doing this. I'm not getting up until I finish it. So, well, until I get it cast on. There was some procrastination knitting on some other things. I'm like, no, just before this day is done, you're casting these things on. So, here it is so far. Ta-da! So, I, prov I was just here last time. So, I provisionally cast on the sleeves. So, they're on waist yarn here. Along with the underarm stitches are on locking stitch markers. And uh, it's just easier that way. I often do that with thumbs of um, fingerless mitts. I'll put them on like three different locking stitch markers because I don't always have voice drawn, but I often have locking stitch markers. They work quite well as a stitch holder, let me tell you. So I finished the collar. I think you're supposed to... This is supposed to be knit flat. This is the Peaceful Pullover by Maria Yarley, and I'm knitting it out of Miss Babs Katahdin in first choice. And it is supposed to be knit flat. I obviously am knitting it in the round because it's already in the round. So you're supposed to knit it flat, I think then seam it up, then do the collar, then do the sleeves. I don't remember. I'm doing them in a different order. That's all I remember. I think you do the sleeves, then seam it up, then do the collar, because you have to seam it before you do the collar. I obviously didn't have to seam it, so I just did the collar and bound it off, and I, just so that it's done. And I tried it on. It fits quite nicely. I think it'll grow a little bit when I block it, which is good. It's a little short. Not a whole lot, but a little. So all I have to do is the sleeves, which should be pretty simple because it's just stockinette. I just have to figure out the decreases as I go down. And I like knitting top-down sleeves because I like long sleeves and 
it's easier just to figure it out. You put it on and you were like, okay, am I done yet? Okay, not yet. And then you just keep moving. So very scientific, I know. But anyway, I, there's actually no needles or anything on this at the moment, which is kind of nice. So it's easy to try it on after I finished it. So that came a long way. Once I, once I cast on the sleeves, it was a piece of cake. It really is not a hard pattern. I just had some mental block against the provisional cast on sleeves. Let me tell you, provisional cast on is quite easy. I use the head wig. You need to be quiet. Yeah. I use the method that kind of looks like the long tail. I know there are different methods for provisionally casting on things. I use the one that kind of looks like the yarn, uh, the long tail. It's just like you hold the yarn the same way, but things are separate. Anyway, she's making a lot of noise, so I'm gonna make her fly around a little bit to make her be quiet. I'll be right back. Okay, I think she's tired now. We'll at least for a little while. We'll see. Sorry. All right. Next, I pulled out, so after I worked on those two things, I pulled out some other things from the pile, and I've been working on my husband's Gryffindor scarf, which is out of Cascade 220, which I have in my very large, totally awesome Batgirl bag, and um, it is getting very long, very, very long, like the scarf that never ends. Yeah, there it is. And there are 15 repeats of the stripies. And I think I'm going to do 17. Mine has 15. He's taller than I am. So I think I'm going to do 17 on his. And I'm not really following a pattern. I mean, there's lots of patterns kind of like this on Ravelry. But I'm just knitting like 28 rows and then two rows in the goldenrod, three rows in the maroon, two rows in the goldenrod, 28 rows. And then repeating. So I think I have 50, I think I said I have 15 stripes so I need to do I'm just uh, about, I just finished the 28 rows so I'm about to do another stripe repeat and then I think I have one more and then I'm gonna see how long it is. So now she's trying to get in her cage. <laughs> anyway so that is almost done. I mean almost. It's really like I, I the, I think what happens is that I knit on it for a while because it's super easy. It's just stocking it in the round. I knit on it for a while and then I get tired of it. So I put it away and then like four or five months later, I pull it out. I'm like, why am I not working on this? And then I knit, you know, two or three repeats and then be like, oh, that's why I'm tired of this thing. And then I put it away. So it's been on the needles for a year and a half, maybe. It really shouldn't take that long. I mean, it is a super long scarf, but it's just stocking it around. Oh, here. So I did put a locking stitch marker in from where. So this is where I picked it up. Maybe yesterday? So I've knit that from yesterday. I did a little bit last night, and then like during choir rehearsal and in between like handball performances this morning. It goes really fast. I just need to do it. So hopefully that will be done. Um, what I did with mine is I finished it and then I don't know if I seamed the ends. I don't weave in the ends on the inside. I just tie them. Because it's a tube and no one sees them. It's great. Because otherwise it's a lot of ends to weave in. And then I, with mine, I seamed the ends with tassels. So I'll probably do the same with his. I don't remember look at mine. I don't remember what colors I used. I probably used mostly the maroon, maybe a little bit of the goldenrod. I honestly don't remember, so we're gonna have to go look that up. Um, the other thing that I pulled out actually this morning, very early, because I woke up super early. Not, not pleasant, but whatever. Is I pulled out the uh, hat I had started for my husband before Thanksgiving. And it's out of Malabrigo Rios in the Azulus. Azulas colorway? I don't actually know how you pronounce that. Sorry. But he wanted a um, water bender pattern. If you've ever seen Avatar The Last Airbender. And um, it's got some like, so if you look on the project page, I put it there. 
and it's got like some waves and then a swirly on the top. So I thought, well, I'll do some waves with like increases and decreases. So that's all I did there. And then the the crown decreases will be the swirly thing. I'm like, it's based on a water bender or something or other. But uh, I put it next to his other hat this morning and I feel like it's too small. I don't have him here because he's at work. So I need to have him try it on. I have another hat of mine that's, I think, the same. It's similar weight and stitch count, and I use the same needles. I'm going to have him try that on and see. But otherwise, that should be done very soon, too. I'm like, well, I have all these projects that are very simple. I just need to finish them. Oh, one day. I told myself I can't cast anything new on until I get that pile down. So I didn't. I didn't cast anything new on this week. I was really proud of myself. I just finished things. So speaking of finished things, let's go on to set sail. I did finish some things. And finished two things, actually. Yeah. I finished them at the beginning of the week, so I feel like they've been finished for so long, but I know I haven't showed them to you. So here is the Elowen shawl that I did for the Harry Potter December challenge been along with Oloops. And the pattern, yeah, I said the Elowen shawl by Judy Marples, and the variegated is super, uh, Oloop Superwash Sport, and the You Can Learn a Lot from the Flowers, especially in the month of June, color red. And then the white is just a natural sport weight, undyed sport weight that I had in my stash. And I chose to do a Pico bind off. There are some options, actually quite a few options in the, um, which we'll call it in the pattern. And I don't know if Pico was one of them. There was a knitted on border. I was like, I, that's just too much. I couldn't do it with that. I just felt like this is such a pretty stitch pattern that I didn't want to have a knitted on border and take away from that. So I chose to just do some simple Picos and I thought that was very nice. And so that is done and blocked. The other thing I finished is the do shawl, which I really only had the Pico bind off last time when I showed you. So I finished that. Oh, it is quite large, but I'm really happy with how this turned out. The gradient looks absolutely stunning in it and the loft blocked out quite lovely. And you can barely tell that it's, I switched yarns at the end. So the gradient is a Leadingman Fiber Arts hand spun. I don't know who the dyer of the fiber was, but it's 100% BFL. And then I um, use Broken Tweed Loft and cast iron on the edge. And I really like it. I did extend the, uh, the last lace portion, like I said last time. And I'm happy I did that because it did, it's almost my wingspan, which I like. And it's very big. I, had, I was trying to model it take a picture of it and you kind of have to wear it off one shoulder to really get the gradient so I don't know how this looks but you know I can pretend like I'm avant-garde or whatever <laughs> anyway so I tried to take a picture like off the shoulder because it is in wedges and I really like it I'm really excited to wear it I actually haven't worn it because I haven't gone very many places. It's what you do when you're on vacation. <laughs> you stay in your PJs a lot. So that is done. And those are the only two things I finished this week. I know. I thought I was hoping to finish more, but I realized a lot of things were just at difficult points. And so I passed those difficult points. But now there's a lot of other knitting to do, like sleeves and whole other half of a shawl. So that's that. From the mainland, I got some stuff. I actually got some more today. So that was kind of exciting. I checked the mail on the way in. I'm like, it's Sunday, but they've been doing like two deliveries or extended hours or I don't know what, but we've been getting a lot of deliveries of mail, which is kind of fun. I mean, some of it's junk, but you know, what are you gonna do? Put it in the recycling. That's what you're gonna do. All right, from the mainland, I got another skein from the Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted, and it is a beautiful skein of Unwind. That's it. 
It didn't come with a label. It's almost a full skein, but I love it. I forget the colorway she told me, but I love it. It's these, um, that's very true to color, actually. I actually changed the light bulbs in here uh, to more full spectrum so that things would look better on the podcast. So I hope you appreciate the color. I realize sometimes it's kind of yellow and orangey in here. So I'm like, you know what, let's get some full spectrum light bulbs so that things actually look nice on the podcast. <laughs> and I just like full spectrum light bulbs. So that is that. And... <laughs> big snow flying around but I really like it. it's got it's like seafoam green with some like other muted greens and then this muted like pops of pink love it anyway so it's probably gonna become socks for me that's one thing I got and then I also got a package of minis from fishnets because I had sent her some things so this is fishnets Ta-da! on Etsy and I've been wanting to try her yarn for a while and so she sent me some minis. Aren't those fun? I haven't taken them out of the package yet because I want to preserve them from cat hair <laughs> as much as possible. So there's some really fun. This one right here is a sparkle one. And these on the edges are in bright neon. They're really fun. So I think this one might be a self striping. It's looking like it. I don't actually know. I'll have to see when I wind them up. So, those are fun. What else did I get from the mainland? Ooh, yes. I just put it all in one package. I had saw these on Instagram, and I was like, oh, I need these. So, I got them. Because what do you do? These are little Totoro themed stitched markers. So you have Totoro. And they're handmade by One Sock Wonder on Etsy. And she had them as part of a kit. Like a, um, she had a bag and the stitch markers and some yarn. And like, I have a Totoro bag. I really just want the stitch markers. So there's another little Totoro type dude, and then there's a little soot sprite, and a little leaf, Ta -da! and I've been keeping them together on this cute little thing, but aren't they just so adorable? They're so cute. And he's even got the whiskers and like the things on his tummy and the leaf on his head. Isn't that just so cute? So, those are going to be going in my Totoro bag when I do my big bag sort of things. And yeah, I got one more thing in the mail, which was from Java Jenny of Kitchen Counter Crafter. And she had offered me one of her um, espresso needle cozies as a test. So I just came in the mail today. I haven't opened it, so I thought I'd open it on air. Ta -da. So let's see. She said she picked a... I, I told her to surprise me. So we'll see what she picked. Oh yeah. She wins. Alright. Oh, I got like a whole bag of goodies. Oh! <gasps> Does it close in the dark? <laughs> you have no idea how excited I am. Okay, maybe a little bit of an idea. Look at this! So she sent me a Star Wars. Alright, Hedwig? Hedwig? You need to be quiet. So this is what the needle cozies look like. I'm sorry, hold on a second. Let's see if I can get her to shut up a little bit. Okay, I'm back. And Hedwig's up here. We'll see if she'll be quiet <laughs> or stay there. I have no idea. So this is one of her DPN cozies. Or not, they don't have to be DPN. Espresso Your Needles. So here's what they're called. And they've got these snaps on them. And I have, I have some other ones that I use. Um, 
but I haven't tried hers, so I'm gonna try them out. But you stick your needles in there, and then you snap it. Yeah, that snapped. And they hold your stitches on there, which is really awesome because when your needles are super full and you shove projects in your bag really quickly, which is, I do a lot, <laughs> these are really nifty just kind of help keep your stitches on the needle and also protect your needles from poking through the bag and things like that. So yes, Jenny, I am a Star Wars fan. We did go to see Star Wars the night it came out and, um, I didn't, I wore a Star Wars t-shirt because I don't have a costume, but my husband and one of our friends dressed up, actually a couple of our friends dressed up, and it was super fun. There, there was only two other people dressed up in, I mean other people were wearing Star Wars t-shirts, but no one like full costume. And um, it was kind of sad, we're like, oh, we were thinking more people might dress up. But at least in our showing, there were only two others. There was a Han and a Chewie. So we took some pictures together, and... You can see them on Instagram. The theater has really terrible lighting, so we, they did the best they could. So yes, I'm a Star Wars fan. I did enjoy the new movie. I, I, I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was just enough of kind of the old story, and but it did move forward and they introduced new characters, which was great. So I enjoyed it. If you are remotely into Star Wars, definitely go see it. Even if you're not into Star Wars, everyone's going to be talking about it. You should just go see it. It's totally worth it. So thank you for this. I will be trying this out. I have a Star Wars bag, so I'll have to find another nerdy bag to put it in. And she sent me some other goodies. Got a ruler. That's what these things are called. And a stitch marker. And oh, it's a little cup. I didn't notice that before. It's like a little coffee cup. If I can show it. There it is. Isn't that cute? That's really cute. So, yay! I'm excited to try that out. I will let you all know how that goes. I'm also excited that it glows in the dark. I really like things that glow in the dark. I have some uh, Star Wars I guess I got uh, Lego lightsaber earrings that go in the dark. So I wore those as well, which is really fun. Because today I'm wearing my super festive Jingle Bell earrings that I only get to wear, you know, so often. I also kind of decorated for Christmas. Are you happy? <laughs> um, I'm a member of Baha'i Faith, which I've talked about before. And so growing up, I did celebrate Christmas um, because most of my family is Christian. So we celebrated Christmas. Um, now we don't celebrate it as much. Um, I love Christmas. Christmas is awesome. I love Christmas lights. I love spending, I think it's, I really like the spirit of Christmas of, you know, spending time with family and giving and it's wonderful. So, but we don't really decorate that much for Christmas. So I know a lot of people have been podcasting in front of their Christmas trees, but I don't have a tree. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I put up some like little pins here oh there she goes and um oh thank you to the viewer who sent me a card i don't know if you wanted me to say your name but you know who you are i got a christmas card i was really excited <laughs> i was really excited to get a christmas card so i put it up it's all sparkly it's really fun it's like all sparkly it says, it says season's greeting so thank you for that i like it i'm also wearing my christmas shirt that says was it me the dog all tangled up in Christmas, er, in Christmas lights. All right, enough about that rambly stuff. Let's get on with Flora and Fauna. And I got asked a bunch of questions, which is awesome. So I think I'll save some of them for later episodes. So if yours doesn't get answered, don't worry. It's on my list and I will answer it. Um, someone asked as a follow-up to last week's episode about sizing socks about how do I adjust for people with large calves? And the answer is that once I turn the heel, I've done some like this with mine too. Actually, with the ones I'm wearing, Here, I'll take them off. They're a little stretched out, but they're all right. Um, this is actually the second pair of socks I ever knit, and I knit them uh, to like use up all the yarn. So there are some increases up here. I don't know if you can see those at all. I can barely see them. Somewhere around here. So what I do after I turn the heel, 
uh, I usually knit maybe like an inch just to kind of establish the pattern and then I just increase. Uh, usually I try to do it within the pattern so this is not very noticeable or you know on the edges or something like that. Um, or sometimes when I turn the heel, if I know someone has a larger calf, when I turn the heel instead of you know decreasing all of the gusset stitches, I don't know if you can see that, this one doesn't do it, but instead of decreasing all the gusset stitches, I'll leave a couple so that adds two stitches on each side, so that's an extra four stitches, and then just you know continue knitting. So that's a it's an easy way to hide an you know an increase for the leg. And you can see here that this this side kind of goes up straight, but this which is the back of the foot or the back of the leg kind of goes. I guess it's better if I hold it here. You can see it kind of goes out here, and that's from the increases for the calf. The other thing that I uh, have started doing is increasing for the cuff. When I start the ribbing for the cuff, I will also increase for that. Uh, just to add, because then it's stretchy and then it's not so tight at the top. Because I feel like sometimes I pull on the sock and the ribbing is just stretched to the max and I'd rather have a little bit of snugness. I mean, that's the whole point of ribbing is to, you know, keep the sock up. So I started increasing for that maybe like every six stitches or something like that I'll do like knit purl knit purl knit front and back knit purl knit purl knit front and back or something like that so it's not a huge amount of increase but it's just enough that it gives a little extra room and that's also great for people with larger calves to give that extra kind of then you're not stretching the the ribbing to the max which makes means that it has no effect it doesn't have the scrunching effect. You know what I'm talking about, right? Hope so. All right, let's put this sock back on. My toes are cold. And uh, so is that. The other question that's related to sock knitting was how I'm liking parallel sock knitting, which I have started doing lately because my gauge was weird for two at a time. And I am enjoying it. It seems knitting on one sock at a time is kind of nice. It makes it seem like it goes faster, which it is because you're only knitting one sock and then you go knit the other sock. And I'm enjoying it. My gauge is still funky. I don't know why. Maybe it's just the thing with two at a time is that you're knitting them at the same time. So if you're stressed out, then they'll both be tight. Whereas with, you know, if you're relaxed, then they'll both be loose. But if you knit them concurrently, you could knit one, you know, a couple inches on one when you're super stressed out and the two inches on the other one when you're kind of relaxed and then they end up different. I don't know. But I'm enjoying it. I haven't had that many problems. The only thing that's kind of annoying is that I then have to keep track of what I do on one sock and then do it on the other sock. So if I make a mistake on one sock, when you're doing them two at a time, you can just immediately do it on the other sock. I mean, it's not a mistake. It's usually, you know, like, oh, I feel like increasing here or decreasing here or changing the pattern or whatever. And then I have to remember what I did on the other sock, which is kind of annoying, which is why the last pair I knit ended up two different lengths because I had messed up on the pattern on one and done it correctly on the other one, which meant that they were different lengths. But it's okay. He liked them anyway. Ooh, let's not, let's not knock over the lamp. <laughs> He liked them anyway, so it doesn't really matter, right? Uh, I think that's, I'm going to stick with those two questions for now. And there are a lot of other questions, which I will get to at a later date. So I hope you all have a lovely holiday. Spend lots of time with family and friends. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to play some games and eat some food, probably. And do some fun things. So I think drive around and see Christmas lights. That's what we do Christmas Eve. <laughs> we drive around and see everyone's pretty Christmas lights. It's really fun. One time we did it and it was snowing and it was gorgeous. I don't think we're going to get snow this year. We got like a big storm with snow a while ago. And then yesterday, no, the day before, Friday, it, we had a weird snow. Uh, I, we didn't think it was going to snow, but it was, it did. I walked outside and I'm like, oh, it's snowing. And it was this really dry, flaky snow, and it's, I mean, it's all gone now. But it's been kind of warm, which means that the heat in my apartment is not 
on high, which means that my apartment's cold, so we've been having a lot of fires, which is nice. I like having fires. Um, I like sitting in front of them. It feels nice. So that's it for, like, uh, I mean, for knitting questions. Someone had asked a Lego question about how do we, so we'll move into From My Holly. They had asked, how do we sort and store our Lego pieces? So, oh, I should have brought something with me. I'll have to go get it. Hold on. But what I, what we do is we have, for every set that we have and that we want to keep is um, once we build it, uh, we enjoy it obviously. And then when we break it down, we put all of the pieces in a plastic bag, like a Ziploc sandwich bag or gallon size, you know, freezer bag and label it. We started doing this because we need this. And for bigger sets, we label like bag one of two or something like that. So we know. And then those get stored in big, like Rubbermaid tub kind of things. And so we have like all the Star Wars together, all of the Lord of Rings together, all of the you know, like DC Comics and Marvel Comics and like the Christmas stuff is all together in bin and we have a lot of Lego and it's in bins everywhere. <laughs> so that's how we keep our sets if we want to keep them like together as a set so that we can rebuild it like we did with the Haunted House this year. We rebuilt that um, just out of the bag and then we have the instructions stored in like a filing system in the closet over there. That's why I'm looking over there. And then the pieces, well, we're not keeping them in sets. We keep them in a, it's a thing for tools. It's like a, I'm going to go get it so that you can see what it looks like. Because me trying to explain it is not going to go very well. Okay, I'm back. Uh, so this is what we keep the pieces in. And we sort them by piece type. I'm going to close it. So this is what we keep them in. Ta-da! And I'll open, and I can open it and show you. Uh, when you're first, when you first get into like a lot of people sort by uh, color, which is a great way to do it, but then you realize that you're looking for a specific piece and maybe not the color necessarily, or sometimes you're looking for a specific piece in a specific color. So what we started doing is, or what Jeremy started doing actually before I even knew him, is that you sort by piece type. So this is no pan that like this is a curved edge no off off the cat is not very interested in everything because i put the bird away so that i could open the door to get this for you so we have different pieces they're the same piece in the, of the different colors in little boxes and things that we have more of obviously have bigger boxes we have some that are deeper and bigger for bigger pieces and then we kind of group things. So this is like, there's some corner pieces. There's like a bunch of roof pieces. There's some like pieces with holes in them for different purposes. Some like slanted pieces in here. So they're all kind of similar piece types in this in the same box. And then we have a whole stack of these boxes. But they're they're made for what is it called professional organizer for I think they're supposed to be for nails and tool bits and things. Hi Pan. How's the cat? So this is how we sort the pieces and so when we're done with a set or when we just have loose pieces left over or whatever then this is where they go. So then they get sorted into piece types. So I hope that helps. I'm sorry if the pets were very distracting. <laughs> I try to keep them, you know, under control, but they're pets and there's only so much I can do. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you have a wonderful holiday and I will talk to you all next week. All right. Bye.